Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be restoring this very old side table. This side table is pretty knackered. This side table belongs to a family friend and it was actually her grandchild that jumped on this table and just completely snapped off the leg. It's a very old side table that's been in their family for a very long time. That's why they don't want to chuck it away. So if you have a piece of furniture at home a bit like this that is completely broken, I'm going to show you how to restore it and actually it will be as strong as it was in the beginning. So as you can see, this whole leg has completely snapped off. The good thing about this is that it's a quite a clean snap, so there'll be a lot of good glue surface. Uh, the Mawson tenons, even though it's, they're completely apart, they're all, they are still solid, so all you really need to do is add a lot of glue in this and it will lock it all together. The stretchers have come loose, but again, uh, the dowel on the end is solid. So you just need to glue it in that gap. And yeah, it looks pretty awful and people at this stage might just think to chuck it away, but with not a lot of money, you will be able to fix this. Okay, so before you just jump right in and shove glue all over it, I'm just gonna look around the table, kind of wiggling the parts to see what is loose and where I need to add glue, and I can see uh, what areas are still strong. So this leg, I'm twisting it, and I can see that the stretchers are still glued in place and it's solid up here. This leg is strong here, but there's a gap on the top there, if you can see that crack there in the light. And over here, this again is pretty strong. So actually on the top here, you can see there's a big crack there and some cracks down the side. What I think I'm gonna do is squeeze some glue into those cracks, put a lot of glue in this area, put it all together, then clamp all the corners and uh, if there's any cracks they will close up. Okay so pretty much what you need for this is clamps, glue and maybe masking tape might help. Now as you can see I've got a lot of Irwin one-handed grip clamps and if you're getting starting woodwork I highly recommend these. I've got uh, long bar ones as you can see here uh, which have a large opening. I've got very small ones down here and uh, some medium sized ones. So for this project, I'm gonna be using a couple of long ones and a couple of small ones. So it's a good idea getting a few different sizes. And in terms of glue, I'll show you what glue you want. I think I'm gonna use uh, this Evo stick wood glue, which uh, dries clear. You can use some yellow wood glue, like Gorilla Glue, or Type On One would be really good. I'm gonna go for the Evo stick because I want the glue to dry clear, so you really don't see it. But if you're building something from scratch, I'll normally use Type On One. But if you're not a woodworker, if you go down to your local home center, they will have wood glue. Uh, pretty much anything will work. So pick some of that. Okay, so there are a few ways of restoring this. You can do it uh, by gluing each piece on at a time. If you come in, as you can see, this piece is from the top of the leg. And to make it easier for you, if you don't want to do it all in one go, you could glue this on there and then glue the next piece on the side there and then finally the leg. But if you're a bit more comfortable, you can glue it all in one go. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, you just gotta be a bit quick. Uh, you gotta check about the open time of the glue. It should say on the back how long uh, you've got before it sets. This should be fine, it should be about 20 minutes, uh, which will be perfect. So let's get started. All right, so first I'm gonna put some glue down in the gap on the back side of the Mortison tenon. The good thing about this glue bottle, it has a sort of a nozzle on the front so I can direct where the glue goes. That looks like a good amount, and I'll put some there. And it's fine if you have a bit of squeeze out, just make sure you wipe it. And depending if you wanna keep the, the old finish on the piece, uh, if the glue squeezes out, you might need to sand it away, which might sand away the finish. So if you want to keep the old finish, make sure you don't get a lot of squeeze out on that. Okay, so next I'm going to add this part, which some glue needs to go into this dowel. And in this area here. Like that, that goes in nicely. 
And it's pretty much like putting a puzzle together, fitting all the pieces, seeing where they go. And now the next small piece is in the tabletop. So I'm going to lift the table up, put some glue in this area here. Wipe away that squeeze out. And when we put clamps on this, there will be a lot more squeeze out that you'll need to wipe away. But that's looking all right. And now time to fit the leg. All right, so the leg goes on this way, and I can see this stretcher goes into this hole here. So I'm gonna put some glue into that gap, like that, some there, and I'm, just, I'm not going to put it in yet, but I'm just going to see what other glue surfaces need to be glued first. And it looks like it's pretty much a straight fit from there. So I'm just going to put pretty much cover this whole cracked area with glue because I know it's a clean snap. All right, now for the moment of truth. So first I'm going to put in the stretcher. Squeeze it under like that. Sort of shimmy it in. There are still gaps there, but that's because we haven't got the clamps on yet. And before I put the clamps on, I'm going to squeeze some glue into these cracks here. Not too much. And this glue will dry clear, so the glue won't be able to show that much and then when I refinish it, it will hide it even more. I've got glue pretty much everywhere and it's time for the clamps. So I'm going to put one along here. You can see there's a nice clean squeeze out line all around those cracks. So that tells me I've got enough glue in there and I'm going to be re-sanding this so I'm not worried about the squeeze out. But if you don't want to refinish it, then you might want to get a damp cloth and wipe away that squeeze out as soon as it comes out. On the top of this leg, you will see this crack and this crack close up. Like that. I'm going to add one clamp on the top and bottom of the leg. And finally, with this crack on the leg. All right, so now I've added clamps on all the areas where there's cracks. Now it's just doing the final touches before the glue dries. And by looking at it, I can see that the two uh, front legs are splayed out a tiny bit. So before it dries, what I'm gonna do is add a clamp, just lower down the legs and clamp it slightly until they go in and match the back legs. So now I'm happy with that. I can look from this side, they look fine and this side there straight now glue might say on the bottle that it takes an hour to dry I highly recommend just leaving it for 24 hours overnight uh, so the glue has fully cured and uh, there's no risk of it breaking again when you unclamp it so I'm gonna leave mine for 24 hours and I'll see you tomorrow when I take off all the clamps and then we'll go from there now initially there was just this one clamp on the leg that I'm gluing on but that means that all the other legs were sagging down onto the workbench and making the tabletop not level. So what I did is I added a clamp on each of the legs uh, to raise them all up to the same height so then the whole table sort of glued flat, if that makes sense. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off all the clamps and uh, see how the table looks. As you can see, these Irwin clamps are really easy to use. You can put them on and take them off with one hand. So you can support your workpiece with the other hand while you're taking the clamps off. And first impressions are nice and solid again. All right, so the table looks pretty good. I can see that the leg that I glued up is now the most solid leg because all that glue is really holding it in place. And from that, I can feel the other legs. And actually, there's one area that is a bit wobbly. And if you zoom in onto this stretcher here, I can see that this stretcher is loose and it's going in and out. Is the camera picking that up? Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of 
open that as much as I can, squeeze some glue in that gap, close it again, and uh, that should be the last bit of glue I need to add onto this piece. Okay, so another good thing about these clamps are instead of clamping two things together, you can remove this end and uh, you'll be able to push two things apart. So I want to push these two legs apart just slightly so I can put some glue in the gap. So if I put the leg in the middle, press the legs out a tiny bit, it's, I don't want to do it too much to break the table, but just slightly, get some glue. Squeeze it in this gap. And you want to just squeeze as much in as you can. And when I take this clamp off and then squeeze legs back together, all this glue that I'm putting around the outside will then squeeze further into the leg. Also, the glue looks very white here, but as you can see on the top, um, there, all the squeeze out has gone clear. So. It's very hard to see. So I think that is enough glue. A little bit more on. And when I take off this clamp, pop it back around the other way. And squeeze them together. The stretcher should go in nicely. And just because I used a little bit of glue, I don't really need to wait 24 hours. So I'm going to see you in a couple of hours and the whole table should be all glued up. All right, so now it's the final time of taking off the caps. Hopefully I don't find any more loose, wobbly parts of the table. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you the areas where I put the glue, just to show you how well the glue is hidden because that glue uh, dries clear. Around the edge here, it's hard to see any glue and at the top there as well. Okay, so now the table is all glued together, it's very solid. You weren't to know that a whole leg snapped off, but if you were to do this at home, you might have some glue squeeze out, and that's what I had a bit of. And now to remove that, uh, you can use some sandpaper. I don't want to be too aggressive because I don't want the finish of this uh, to go away. So you can get some wire wool. I have zero zero wire wool. You can get triple zero wire wool if you want to go finer. But uh, this is sort of a less abrasive than sandpaper. And what you can do is you can rub it along the glue seams and that should get all the loose squeeze out off. If you've got a lot of squeeze out, you can use a chisel, uh, but be careful depending on if you want to keep that finish. Wire wool is also good at blending lots of areas uh, together, but wire wool sort of makes it a matte finish. And this finish on this table has quite a nice shine, sort of a French polish finish. So I don't want it to be matte, I want it to blend all together. So the next stage is finishing. Now finishing is very easy. Uh, if you're a beginner, some people are scared about what to do and they don't know how to do it. So there are some very simple products you can buy uh, to add a very nice finish. So first of which is Danish oil. If you wanted just a really simple oil finish, you can buy Danish oil from any home center. And the simplest way to apply it is just to put it on some cloth and rub it on the piece of furniture. If you want to go even further, you can add multiple layers and even sand in between each layer to make it very smooth with 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, in the past, I've just used it without sanding in between layers and that's turned out fine. But uh, that is one uh, option for you. Another option is this product called Restore a Finish. They have multiple different versions for whatever wood you have. I picked cherry because it pretty much blends with a lot of different woods. Even though this wood isn't cherry, this will work just fine on it. And uh, you can use Restore Finish with pretty much anything. You don't have to have a broken leg. If you have a dining room table with uh, mug stains, you know, you've got a, the, the heat rings, or if you've got um, scratches on a table, marks on the table, heat marks, water marks, this is the product for you uh, because you just rub it on, let it settle and then buff it off and all those marks will disappear. So uh, if you want me to make a video on this specific product, comment down below and uh, I'll teach you how to use it. But for this table, I think I'm gonna use this because there's quite a few different patches that I just wanna all blend together. So instead of Danish oil, I'm probably gonna use this Restorer Finish. And finally, uh, to add a nice sheen, Sheen's the right word? Mm -hmm. To make a 
sort of a glossy finish, I'm going to add some wax. Now normally to my furniture I add this clear brie wax, bri wax, whatever you want to call it. And this is what the clear one looks like. See, it's very nice sort of beeswax colour. And you can add that to any type of wood. But because this wood already has sort of a, I'm guessing a stain on, or it's just a naturally dark wood, I'm going to use this different type of brie wax, which is medium brown, which uh, should really enhance the dark colour of the wood. It should make it richer and just work better with this piece. So if you're uh, restoring a piece of furniture and it's and the piece of furniture is dark, then maybe you want to get some dark wax or you can get some light wax if uh, the piece of furniture is oak or beech or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a cloth, rub this whole table down with some Restore Finish and then add some brie wax and then we should be done. Okay, so if uh, the scratches on the table are really deep or quite severe, then you can apply this Restore Finish with some uh, wire wool, just pour it on the wire wool and uh, then uh, apply it to the table. They recommend not pouring this directly on the table. Um, I don't know why, but obviously you should follow their recommendations. So the marks on this table aren't that severe and uh, I think it sort of adds character because we want this to look old because it is a family heirloom. So I'm gonna keep any of the, the marks on. I'm just applying this with cloth. And as you can see, it's making it nice and shiny. That will die down a bit, it will go matte again, but when we add the wax, that wax will leave a permanent shine. So I'm just going all the way around it, on the bits that I glued, and it's really hiding those seams, which is very nice. If I want to zoom in onto this leg, that's one of the areas we add glue, and uh, you can't see any seams there. Is that like pick up the shine? Mm -hmm. Pretty good. There were tons of marks on this leg and it's really just blending all the colours together. That leg looks brand new. Alright, so it's the next day and uh, the restore finish has dried. I also added a layer of Danish oil. Uh, I applied that the exact same way as the Restore Finish, just with some paper towel, rubbed it on. And now, as you can see, there's a very nice shine. The top's very smooth and it has a nice glisten to it. However, I don't really like the feel of this Danish oil on this because it's a little bit um, tacky. Uh, it is smooth, but uh, a wax finish will feel much better. Not only will the wax feel nicer, it will also blend all the wood together and make it look a bit calmer because at the moment the, the, the oil is very shiny, it's sort of looking like an epoxy lacquer type of finish and that's not very attractive. So the wax will kind of dull it down a tiny bit but still add a little bit of shine. So what you do to apply this wax, also I forgot to mention I'm using the clear brie wax because I actually don't want this to go any darker. I think it's got a nice color just from the oil. So I'm just gonna go for a clear wax. And what you do is you get a little bit on one paper towel. You don't wanna to add too much. And I'm gonna apply it all over the top at the moment. And as you can see, this side of the tabletop has suddenly got a very dull and a matte color. That isn't what it finishes out like. When I buff it, uh, it will shine up. I'm just going to add this all over the top. As you can see, it's very shiny now and very smooth to the touch. You can do as many layers of this wax as you want. I'm just going to do one because I'm not adding the wax uh, for protection. I'm just adding the wax for the feel of the table. Mm. Is it smooth? Feels much nicer. So now I've added wax all over the table, and now the table is complete. Ok, 
Okay, so I've added all the wax onto the table and I'm very happy with how it's come out. Now this table is rock solid, very strong, nothing is wobbly or loose and the leg is solidly joined back on. Now that is because the crack uh, between the leg and the table was you know, just a clean snap, so there was a lot of glue surface there. If the uh, broken leg was more damaged and there was sort of gaps in uh, the joint between them, then I would have to think about reinforcing it further with maybe a dowel. So if you have a piece of furniture, you've got to sort of uh, judge if it's um, as simple as just gluing it back on, or if you've got to add a screw in a certain place or something like that. So hopefully that was helpful to you. If you've got a friend with a broken table and this video might be useful to them, feel free to share it. That would really help out the channel. I hope this video was useful to you. If you enjoyed this style of video where I'm giving you some tips instead of a whole build, then just comment down below. Let me know what you think uh, because I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope you enjoyed the video as well. If you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe. If you like the video, give it a like. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.